a human player selected random and turned out to be a Terran player. So what we're going to see here is whether the, the bot varies its strategy in this matchup or whether it's kind of similar. Um, we see the human player saying, good luck, have fun to the bot. Um, <laughs> no response on the bot. So <laughs> I don't know if that was forbidden by competition. Pretty cool, 55 then. <laughs> Okay, uh, we don't see the player following up with questions like where are you from, <laughs> so, so that's just kind of a friendly hello. And what I'm interested to see in this game is how much of a variation there is in the boss strategy, if there is one, because the build it went with last game was actually pretty well suited for that race matchup. Uh, the kind of two gate production of Zulots is good, it just kind of didn't group up units enough to be effective with its attacks. So what we should see here is kind of a quicker expansion of its tech tree. So it should go for kind of the goons or later tech, which are going to be better against Terran. Um, and this is the same matchup. What's going to be a huge advantage for the Terran here is that to get into the main base, there's actually these ramps. So that the, the bases actually have a high ground advantage. So it's hard to attack up these ramps. And what we see is the bot starting to scout out the human player. Um, it found out where it was, but it decided not to actually go into a space to acquire more information. Um, so I'm not sure if this bot's going to try to respond based on any sort of tech, other than uh, just knowing the opponent's race as enough to kind of bootstrap its initial strategy. Um, yeah, okay, so, and the bots know going in what their opponent's race was, uh, that's just something you get through the API. And we actually do see a different strategy here. Instead of going straight for two gates, it's actually um, collecting gas earlier. And by collecting gas earlier, it can expand its tech tree earlier. And it's going to go for a different build because if it did the build from last game, what would happen is it wouldn't be able to break up the ramps with just those um, melee units. So it has to go for something that can actually be uh, range tech. And what it's building now is the cybernetic score, which will allow for range tech. And what we see here is also the human player scouting at the bottom now, and they actually haven't found the bot yet. So they don't know how aggressive the bot's going to be, but what they're actually doing at this point is building structures around their choke point, and what they're going to do is build a wall, which is the unit type, so you can't actually get units through there unless you destroy one of the structures. Um, but to build a wall, the Terran player also uses a building that can lift off, so they have control over when units can come in and out of their base. So that's a common technique they're going to use, and that way they can kind of like save. Uh, the Terran player is actually using a worker unit in Marine right now um, until it has enough structures in place to wall off. And he's actually going for a very fast factory here. And this is pretty standard play. What you do is you go for a wall in, then you get your uh, factory up, which will allow for tanks and the really powerful Terran units that you really need against Protoss. And what we're seeing from uh, the Protoss bot is fairly standard. Uh, it's getting a second gateway now, which means we'll be able to produce more uh, dragoons and units of that nature. We also see what's kind of standard is it actually hasn't produced any attacking units yet because it's trying to save up for tech, it's trying to save up for uh, these units here, which are dragoons. So often it's a waste of resources to go for these low tier units if you're not going to be able to do any real damage to the opponent. Um, it looks like it's dancing at the ramp for some reason, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and there's an SCV just kind of hanging out uh, at the Protoss space, so it knows the Protoss hasn't done any sort of kind of fast expansion thing, so he's most likely expecting kind of early game pressure here out of two or three gateways. And that's what we're seeing now is uh, the spinning cyber edge part means that the player is going for a range upgrade for their units, uh, which means that they're going to be able to try to attack off the ramp with that upgrade. And they're actually going for three gateways, which means this is kind of um, going to be going for an early attack with kind of not all in, but it's going to be a significant allocation of resources, and it's going to delay the timing of expansions that it goes for. Um, what we see from the Terran player is pretty interesting, which is he's actually producing a lot of Marines, and the reason for this is he can actually put some early game pressure on the Protoss player, um, on the Protoss bot, um, by sending a couple SCVs with those Marines and a tank. And that's a way, while Terran's usually not that mobile, they can actually kind of push against the early game uh, Protoss player to do this. And what we're going to see here is kind of the initial attack. This is actually a fairly standing timing now we see where the Protoss has these Dragoons out, it's going to have the range upgrade, and here it's going to kind of make or break whether it can build up this uh, ramp or not. And oh, we see that uh, the Terran player now has a tank out. It doesn't actually have a siege mode upgrade yet, which provides a huge advantage. Um, and it looks like it's having trouble actually trying to attack up the ramp at this point. 
So this is a pathfinding issue, apparently. Um, what you can sometimes have happen is you try to attack into a base instead of you know, guarding the base and working on the water. So now we're seeing engagement, and um, no one's really lost forces yet. The units are not getting uh, too much, but they're actually able to do some damage. Um, kind of a nice counter shooter, but now Siege goes up and damage is really being stored on these units, and they're just not doing enough damage considering uh, the turn players not having any losses. And this is interesting, the turn player now has a medic out, which you don't typically see in the style. But given that they're going for a really heavy group push, um, that's going to allow for the Ranger to be useful later on. Um, so now it looks like the Protoss is at a disadvantage. Um, what you typically see in this mode is the, the Protoss player would kind of wait outside the expansion of the Terran to make sure that kind of scouting units don't get out so that vultures, which can kind of plant mines and grass, the Protoss don't get out. And it looks like the Protoss player is not actually going to look at teching up. They're just going to increase their production. They've thrown down more bay so they can increase more dragoons. And they're also expanding. So this is actually a decent expansion time. So, so far it looks like uh, while the Protoss did kind of throw away some units, it did pick off some uh, Marines. So what we're seeing here is it looks like it's going to maybe be this decision of the Terran player going for kind of a timing attack, which means that they're not looking at a long end. They really want to end this soon. Um, while the Protoss player is actually trying to play a fairly safe. And this could be bad for the bot um, if it doesn't get enough defense. I'm very into Zyphek and the Protoss. <coughs> uh, it it, it uh, was a bad choice because of the uh, ground mechanics. Oh, yeah. Because when uh, launch units attack up here, like, uh, like the Tractor that I mentioned yeah, uh, they have a 55 percent miss rate. So it's, it was like if the army of the Protoss was half the size. Yeah. So now we see the, the human player is actually pushing out, and this is when the Protoss really wants to engage because the siege tanks aren't going to be up, they're not going to do a lot of damage. Um, but if we let them get into position, then the bot's just going to take too much damage. So ideally what you would see here is the bot trying to put some pressure against this. Um, so it does actually see this, um, but it's not pushing in towards the tanks yet. Um, it looks like this is a pretty close battle here, actually. So um, these marines are going to get wiped up, and it's deciding to attack these or his medics, which is a very bad choice. It's taking a lot of splash damage. And the medics actually heal each other, so they're really hard to kill. And, oh man, it's just losing a lot of units. If it moves in, it can take this out, but uh, the numbers aren't working out too well for it here. And, yes, yeah, so it is going to repair the tank, so... Uh, okay, just take out one tank. So it's basically the other two tanks here, and this should be able to hold this off. Um, it doesn't look like the humans reinforcing with too, much, uh, too many units at this point. It looks like the humans back off and actually expanded. So what we have now is the, the bot may have gained kind of a little advantage by actually having a faster expansion. Um, although it looks like uh, it is actually reinforcing and um, it, it produces a zealot, which is actually good in the situation because it actually gets up to tanks and you can't take damage from tanks if you're too close to them. Um, at the same time, it looks like uh, the, the human players got another factory out, they're doing a little push. And what they're doing now is kind of a slow creep into the profile phase. So, they're actually building structures uh, that we can uh, put units in for static defense. And this is just going to slowly roll into the Protoss base. So you want to see some sort of uh, switch in tech from the Protoss here, like the, the Dark Templar, which is a cloaked unit, which uh, I don't think the, the human player actually does not have a cloak. Oh, they do have a detection. So they have a scan which allows them to see cloaked units. But um, this is just a really bad position to be. Um, and if you're a Protoss player, um, I encounter this all the time when I play online and you're just trying to do things randomly, like you would try to, I guess, come up with drop ships or, okay, so it is switching up its tech, it is um, going for things like uh, the speed legs here, which are great, but uh, Terran's now pushing in, it's using its work against the defend. Um, this is not going well. <laughs> this is not going <laughs> um, And the, the attack units are actually just dancing around. Uh, so this is uh, looking bad, and okay, these guys decided to commit now. Yeah, they're going, oh, never mind. Um, so this is basically over now. The, the player no longer got the resources from this expansion. It doesn't have any air units that can kind of pull the play away from. It doesn't have any way of kind of getting out of its space to attract the attention of the player. So it's now actually sending out workers from the uh, next to 
this, which means that essentially it's no longer going to be pulling in resources. And that is the BPG from the bot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was our man machine exhibition. Uh, man is still winning. <laughs>